So a year ago, we set out to live a really a nomadic idea in a vintage Airstream Argosy 1976. And so we have spent a year on the road, but man, did that year go by so quickly. And it just seems like yesterday that we were newbies. We had no idea what we were doing. So happy one year anniversary. Cheers. Let's look a little bit back on memory lane. So one of the things that um, you know we've known for a while is uh, always go out and test your gear before you before you're going to go on a long distance hike or road trip, or whatever. And uh, so we're here testing our gear, and good thing we did. Houston, we have a problem. Um, you know, we found out that uh, solar is completely irrelevant if you're going to be boondocking in a national forest. Um, just small little things here and there, popped a few rivets, not really a big problem, but the air conditioner is a big issue. And hopefully we can kind of determine on what we're going to do about that. Um, part of me says fix the old air conditioner up until the point where they say you need a new one. We'll see. So far the test went really well. It's good to know that a 40 year old air conditioner may not work long term. And so I'm glad we found that out now. Um, on our test run and so we can kind of have a plan for what comes later Listen to that baby purr. It's cool time in the Airstream Argosy. We went with a Dometic Frisk air conditioner uh, Of course, we had a retrofit it. Of course we did. That's what you do with an Airstream Argosy But it worked. We got it in. It's fine. We have air conditioning and it's blissful So what could possibly go wrong your very first day out full-time RVing? A lot. So it wasn't all um, a failure. Um, it things uh, A couple things did happen on our first day. Uh, of course, we left late. The other thing too, of course, was I forgot to bring a 30 amp adapter that goes from a lock prong to a regular 30 amp prong on a conventional 30 amp. I just forgot to get an adapter and uh, we didn't have shore power today. The other lesson was, is that when you can't find a review of a campground and campground's been around for a really long time and you can't even find any photographs of RVs parked at a campground, um, you're probably gonna get what you're gonna get. A rundown on what the first week is like when you leave everything and you live in a 180 square foot um, area with two dogs that think it's all theirs. And um, <laughs> but I will say this: um, leaving everything and not having the safety and security of um, a parking lot or a driveway or some place that you know everything is going to be safe. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's a little different. Um, our first week, did things go the way they planned? No, <laughs> no. Um, not but even close. Not even close. And I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing. And, and some, and sometimes it was a good thing. And sometimes it was like, well, we didn't see this coming. In reality, not everything went wrong, but it was about six main components that malfunctions yeah that were not only our 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 first source but our backup and then our backup to the backup and so we were out of backups uh we were <laughs> we were entirely out of uh the redundancy of what you do to get power to get uh electricity any of it and so it was very eye-opening for us within the first two days alone to to kind of navigate through all that. And part of us, part of us said, ah, it's no big deal. Uh, we'll figure it out. Like, you know what the reality is gonna be. Um, 
And so you're like, yeah, yeah, well, I can figure it out. And yeah, 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 this will be okay. But when reality gets very <laughs> close to you, you're like, wow, I, I didn't think the reality was going to happen so quickly. <laughs> I would say our first week is like this. It's like walking on cotton. And it's all, it's just all cushy and it feels good. So and but there's little, sh there's little <laughs> shards in there. I would say in a nutshell, it has been successful. Despite what, on, all of the malfunctions. On a scale of one to 10, 10 okay. being it's been perfect. Okay. One being I'm leaving you here, I'm driving home tomorrow. <laughs> what would you, what would you say? Well, you're catching me in a good moment. Okay. <laughs> Oops. We're not backing up the trailer. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Depends on when you ask that question. No, I think that, uh, I mean, I, I think it's about an eight. I think yeah. we expected, I think we expected to disagree on backing up. We expected to, to, to need a little bit more space from each other than normal. Um, and we, we're still trying to figure out the rhythm of, how a, how a day goes, um, but every day has been so different that we haven't really yeah. adjusted to it yet. Our charge, what do you for me? Oh, eight dollars. Thank you so much. You too. So we knew it was going to happen. It wasn't a matter of if, it was a matter of when they would show up. We've seen countless of other YouTube videos about Mike, but they never really said what in a fierce, competitive little sucker <laughs> that thing is. Mm -hmm. But the masa we had in here the other day, it, it was gigantic. It was huge. And so we've really had to go to war 
with the mice thing. So all in all, we've had probably, I'd say about five mice. So let's add two more. Five mice and a mutant <laughs> mouse in Utah. I'm gonna say five regular mice. And then the one mouse in Utah that obviously has been around since the 50s <laughs> when they were nuclear testing in Utah. At, at first, you know, we didn't want to kill the mouse. You know, and, and, and the we first... We tried relocating a few mice we, and that was we, unsuccessful. We tried the witness protection program for the mouse, um, but comes to find out that they don't care. They really don't care. Um, I think the other thing in the 60 days uh, full time so far that we've learned, and, and this is a pretty big thing, is being flexible on the road. Oh um, and having a plan is good, um, but being having a plan to give yourself flexible time is even better and that was more important than ever in our last visit when yeah. we mooch docked for the first time with friends in fruta colorado right next to grand junction colorado where we were so so happy that we were able to just spend a few more days with them not only did they ask us to spend a few yeah. more days with them but we were able to see sites and really get to know that part of that little section of Colorado and it is so beautiful. We're really glad we we had time to be able to do that. If I can give any advice to anybody and we got the advice and we didn't adhere to it right. initially right. is just remain really really flexible and don't pinhole yourself into you know, booking this campground and staying here and like really being so rigid with your travel schedule because it doesn't, uh, I think you'll find that it's just, it's it's not all that it's cracked up to be. And the other thing too, as far as mooch docking goes, first of all, I hate that term. I hate that word mooch docking. Um, and we, it feels almost, it kind of, it, it feels a little like like you're violating something. Yeah. Well, I think mooch, <laughs> I, mooch talking definitely comes from cousin Eddie and Christmas <laughs> vacation. I mean, the, the, he's the he's the number one offender for mooch docking. Let's face it. Um, and although I did not dump our uh, black water tank in their sewer, um, it it did kind of give me a kind of it was kind of a weird feeling when I pulled up in their neighborhood and it was a nice neighborhood and I pulled the airstream in front of their house. I'm like. Uh, Does the HOA know that we're yeah, here? Yeah, is this allowed? <laughs> Are we going to get kicked out? <laughs> yep. And I think the biggest thing is like when you're mooch docking, don't overflow your composting toilet. I think that's <laughs> a that's a huge, huge tip for you young RVers out there. Um, because you're going to have to walk in their house and say, hey, can I, can I dump? <laughs> uh, then it's a long process to explain to them what a composting toilet is. So just don't overflow it. That's all I gotta say. We are in the Cabela's parking lot. And from here on out, it's all harvest hosts, almost all the way through. Uh, this was an incredible stop, uh, especially a good introduction into harvest host. This place has been sensational, so welcoming.
you're in the desert, <laughs> you have to be very weary of, of, these, of these nomads. <laughs> and let me tell you, when the beer runs out, they skip camp, let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah, and, and so far in the six months um, that we've been doing it, uh, there's been uh, a few surprises. There uh, has been uh, expectations met. There have been expectations lost. There have been <laughs> there have been truths. There have been some realities to it. Um, and so we're going to kind of reflect today on uh, six months of full-time RVing. Yeah in a 1976 vintage airstream mind you and what the good the bad what we have uh what we've kind of had problems with and, and what we're still having problems with uh even after six months of doing it um and so i guess we can start by saying this um our six months has been awesome it's been amazing it has it um, has it, it's been great it has its struggles though it it does have a couple uh struggles and we're gonna we're gonna tell you what those are um for sure but i would say reflecting in in i would say reflecting the last six months i think everything that we had planned as far as traveling in a vintage camper trailer has worked mm -hmm. everything that we so the wood burning stove it's worked um you know the on-demand hot water heater it's worked uh although we didn't get that going until like three months in <laughs> but so for three months it's worked for for three months it's worked um and so you know some of that stuff has worked really well mm -hmm. some of the things that haven't worked well or that we didn't really see or that we didn't know about is really embedded in the lifestyle itself and you know how you know how we really have tried to adapt and because it really is when it comes down to it anybody can tell you about this lifestyle anybody and it's easy to do but you living it you have to adapt yeah. to the challenges that you are going to have you not us or maybe we did but you didn't or whatever that is you have to adapt to it and one of one of the things that we've had to adapt to is that you know Ariane and I have two completely different work ethics oh ouch I wouldn't use the word ethic ethic is a strong word <laughs> ouch um we have different ideals about uh how we go about doing that said work right. and and how how, how it lays out in a given day. Yeah, okay, Epic may have been a... May, okay, I would say we have two different ideas of what time of day we should be working. And so, um, I think I think productivity... Productivity has probably been... A struggle. It's a real... It, the struggle's real, people. We are battling with a force that is darker than Darth Vader. 
it is a force that we are trying to deal with and um, uh, never never change cell providers in the middle of the desert um, and don't fall for the hey we have a virtual sim card that we can download on your phone gag um, so Ariane's phone is bricked it's completely we think it's over done useless useless so we've been sharing data on my Verizon plan and so you know those are things that you know like those little things that normally you would have been able to go to a Verizon store or you would have been able to go to your your you know your whatever data plan you have or make a phone call or whatever that the rules are different when you're out here and <laughs> you know well I, I think we're in the middle of the desert right now there and you know which everyone says oh man there's so much free BLM out there man and it, there is it's true but <laughs> you're not going to be able to walk in and say, hi, can you fix this stuff without driving three hours to go do it. We are in the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Pachucci, you ready to go? I am. Got your high royal mask on. <laughs> we are in the Badlands National Park. So what do you think about Rushmore? Uh, pretty impressive. It is pretty cool. It's very cool. I like how they carve the faces out of the stone. That's the whole point. <laughs> <laughs> we are in Munising, Michigan, the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, we are at the City of Houghton Recreational RV Park. The Buffalo Roundup is is as big of an event as <laughs> Custer State Park uh, puts on. This week we are in Salt Lake City, Utah, at Antelope Island State Park. So this is Park Flight State Park. Uh, it's a little bit south of Salt Lake City. So we're at Monument Point. Um, this is Monument Point behind me. So today we are in Arches National Park. This week we're in the Kebab National Forest on the north rim of the Grand Canyon. We are in the Sycamore Wilderness Canyon. Okay, we are officially in the Narrows.
So after we left Reed City, about maybe 15 minutes into the trip, our battery light went on and uh, we had to figure out what was wrong pretty quick. Ends up it was our alternator and we're in Midland, Michigan getting that fixed and it's been interesting. We are literally in the parking lot of uh, the mechanic that we found to fix. Uh, they have been just awesome. They're letting us stay in their parking lot tonight. The van is in the shop and uh, they even gave us an extension cord so we could power our things uh, for the night. Uh, but um, kudos to, to these guys that letting us that let us do this. So brand new battery, brand new alternator, and yet uh, the battery is dead, or kind of dead. We're at the Walmart in Marquette, Michigan. So we're not really sure why the battery is kind of draining a little bit. Uh, this is a brand new battery. Uh, something is on at night or something is decharging the battery. We're not really sure. Uh, could actually be our secondary battery that's, that's causing problems. Um, but we're not we're not sure the main thing is having the right tools for the right job and that's why we have a battery charger um, the I would say our uh, Predator 3500 our generator has already paid for itself <laughs> in this case uh, It's only taken it only takes about five six minutes to charge the battery and the van starts so I'm not too worried about it um, I am gonna disconnect the battery though when we get to our next campground um, So I don't have to jump it again and I can tell you, the source started in Midland, Michigan. <laughs> and we bought an uh, alternator from AutoZone, and it was a bad alternator. Uh, we were coming out of Page, Arizona. Everything was fine, and uh, we're coming up 89, and uh, we had to climb to about 5,000 feet. And um, all of a sudden, our temp light went nuts. I turned on the heater. Um, but I could smell radiator fluid, so I think if um, you're gonna break down anywhere in Utah uh, You definitely want to break down in Kanab <laughs> Because there's a whole lot to do around here while you're waiting for a full radiator replacement on your tow vehicle
Well, what better way to spend our one year anniversary than in Cook City, Montana, population 72, right on the outskirts of Yellowstone, where we begin our second, really, year of uh, nomadic living. So uh, it's been a great ride. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. So I guess, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so the question I have to ask you then, um, could I ask this question to you a year ago? On a scale of one to 10, 10 being <laughs> everything has gone perfect, and zero has gone, you're packing your bags and you're getting ready to leave, which would be really hard to do since they have no taxi service, no Uber, no airport, <laughs> and you'd have to hike out. Where, where do you think our year went? A solid 9.7. Wow, that's good. Okay, so here's why. It's because if you, sure there's a bunch of crap that we've had to deal with there's a lot of ups and a lot of downs and a lot of unknowns and the unknowns I think have been probably uh, the most exciting struggle which is a contradiction in itself but uh, we knew we were gonna face some struggle we knew we were gonna face unknown we knew we were gonna face a lot that we had no clue about and we have and we've gotten through on the other end each and every time and we've gotten through stronger and I think that despite any of the ich that goes with this lifestyle, the good is so in incredibly good and it's so powerful and it's so rewarding that it, it kind of dis dissipates all the, all the kind of crappy times. Oh, you, you look back on them and you laugh and sometimes you even cry. But overall, cry more than maybe laugh, but yeah, it, it's it's a balance. <laughs> but I think, I think at the end of the day, this lifestyle in this past year has offered us so much freedom and flexibility to choose where, how, and when we want to go somewhere, and that that freedom has just exponentially increased uh, the quality of life, I think. And that to me is what this lifestyle has afforded us in this last year. So, yeah, yeah I, I agree. I mean, let's face it, we, have, we still have a hard time backing up, <laughs> although we're improving every day. <laughs> but. <laughs> no, <clears throat> you know, we've had some epic great moments. We've had some epic great failures, but I think the one thing that I've learned, and I think you would agree, in the one year of just living on the road is this, is that you can plan, 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 plan. You can watch a million YouTube videos, yeah. you can listen to a million podcasts, read a million blogs, and plan, and plan, and plan, plan, and pick what you think is the perfect RV or the perfect rig or you got your system all set up and you're ready to go. But the one thing that I would say that I've learned the most is that it's the learning curve <laughs> that provides the best shit. And <laughs> it's, <true. laughs> it's the learning curve as you're learning that provides all the memories. That's gonna provide yeah. all the great learning situations. That, that provides you the nomadic life that we were looking for. It's definitely not everything we thought we knew. It's definitely not <laughs> nope. that. But I think it's everything else. So anyway, um, congratulations, happy anniversary. I know. Mm, love you. Love you too. <laughs> we'll see you guys next year. Bye.